to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the next item up is approve the minutes of the regular meeting of April 2, 2024. Move to approve the minutes of the regular Board of Trustees meeting of April 2, 2024. Second. Any changes? No. Roll, uh, roll call vote. Trustee Pashima? Aye. Trustee Braden? Aye. Trustee Stifler? Aye. Trustee Fisher? Aye. Trustee Burns? Aye. Trustee Bank? Aye. President's report, uh, Hinsdale Restaurant Week is going on now through April 20th. A list of restaurants and more information about menu items, specials can be found on the Village website. We also have a proclamation to read tonight concerning the Hinsdale Chamber of Commerce, which is celebrating its 100th year anniversary. So I'd like to read that proclamation now. Recognizing the Hinsdale Chamber of Commerce's 100th year anniversary. Whereas the Hinsdale Chamber of Commerce has reached a significant milestone celebrating 100 years on April 25, 2024 of unwavering commitment to the economic prosperity of Hinsdale. And whereas this esteemed organization comprised of dedicated retail professionals and business individuals has been instrumental in promoting ethical business practices and fostering a vibrant economic environment with our community. And whereas through the organization of promotional materials for its merchant members, including the Summer Fine Arts Festival, Uniquely Thursday, and Farmer's Market, the Chamber has significantly contributed to the cultural and social vitality of Hinsdale. And whereas serving as a central hub of information, the Chamber provides valuable resources through the community directory including to our village's schools, churches, recreational facilities, and more. And whereas the Chamber's efforts have been instrumental in, boistering, in bolstering Hinsdale's reputation as one of the most desirable suburbs in the Chicago area, ensuring that this reputation endures through continuous service to the demands of our residents in support of the business community. And whereas the over 225 local businesses and professional people place their trust in Hinsdale's Chamber of Commerce, recognizing the mutual benefits of, and support and collaboration for the prosperity of our entire community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Tom Cawley, President of the Village of Hinsdale, on behalf of the Hinsdale Board of Trustees, the entire staff in the village, and all village residents, issue this proclamation on the occasion of the 100th anniversary of the Hinsdale Chamber of Commerce, proclaim this the 16th day of April, 2024. So that takes us to Pre our agenda President. items. President Colley, yeah. um, Ava Field and Gretchen Barnard are, are here from the chamber. Okay, do you want to say a few words? Say. Absolutely. On behalf of the um, Hinsdale Chamber Board and members, we thank you. We're very honored to have this proclamation and um, honored to, you know, I've been here for 20 years to be part of this organization. It's been huge and very rewarding. Yes, and we'd like to also thank the Village of Hinsdale for the partnership for all of our events. It's made them very successful, so we're grateful for this honor, and thank you. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good partnership. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, that takes us to citizens' petition. Anybody wishing to speak on a matter on or off the agenda? If you've got a matter on the agenda, you may want to wait until we get to the matter. But anybody else is free to speak. Before I begin, I would just like to ask for your patience because this may take a little bit to get through. Could you please state your na say name and address just for the record? I'll get there. Yeah, okay. Okay, sure. and then my second request is that I not be interrupted until the end, and then I'm happy to answer questions. Sure. Okay. My name is Christine Richards, and this is my husband, Brian. We live at 306 South Vine Street in Hinsdale where we have lived for 17 years with four children. We moved here from Chicago because we believed Hinsdale was a safe place to raise our children. Our youngest child, Sean Patrick Richards, was a healthy and beautiful 14-year-old boy. He was walking on a Hinsdale public sidewalk on July 17th, 2023, 
when he was struck and killed by an out-of-control car that bolted out of Fuller's car wash. By the time this car hit our son, it was going over 35 miles per hour, giving Sean no warning and no ability to avoid being hit. Every vehicle has a black box to record it, we have learned. And that black, black box showed, and this is an undisputed fact, that the vehicle accelerated to 30 miles per hour by the time it struck Sean. The gas pedal was depressed all the way to the floor and the brake was never engaged. This was not malfunction. Sean was struck with such a force that his shoe came off while it was still tied on his foot and it landed in the middle of Lincoln Street. Sean was not walking on the street or Fuller's property. He was safely positioned in the middle of a sidewalk, a place where people have every right to walk freely and feel safe. The corner at Lincoln and Chicago Avenue where Fuller's car wash is located is not safe. This has been known by Fuller's and the village for many years. I don't think that Hinsdale residents quite understand how dangerous it is. The vehicle that killed Sean and injured three others inside of the Fontano sub shop was at least the fifth vehicle since 2007 to uncontrollably leave Fuller's to cross Lincoln Avenue and cause harm. Following each of the previous incidents, which I was never made aware of, the village failed to do anything to try to protect the good residents of this village and its visitors. In 2007, a Fuller's car wash employee pressed the accelerator when the vehicle exited the car wash and crashed into a pickup truck parked in front of Fontano's subs. In 2009, a car recklessly exited the Fuller's car wash, crashed into another car that was parked in front of the dry cleaner. That car flipped and destroyed the front of the dry cleaner, injuring one person and causing lasting trauma to another. In 2022, two vehicles rolled out of the car wash exit unattended. One of those pinned a woman against her car. She warned the police that something must be done or there will be a tragedy. As she predicted on July 17, 2023 at 2.30 p.m. on a sunny Monday afternoon, my son was walking to the public library, a place that he and I had many special memories when he was struck and killed in an identical incident to what occurred in 2007 and 2009. Even though this happened at least four times prior to Sean's death, Fuller's car wash has gotten a free pass each time. There has never been, they have never been issued a ticket or fined by the police department or the village. No fines, no public hearings, no traffic study, no assessment of their special use permit, nothing. Even nine months after Sean being killed due to the recklessness, no one has been held accountable. There's been no fine, or violations by the village. Fuller's has operated the car wash for years in clear violation of its special use permit and the law, using sidewalks, parkways, the southbound lane on Lincoln Street for their own business profit, pedestrian safety be damned, and doing absolutely nothing to prevent this, even though that is precisely its role this village board is every bit as complicit as Fuller's in ignoring all of the warning signs that led up to our 14-year-old son's tragic killing. Every day since this special use permit was issued in 1995, this village has had the power to do something to prevent this risk. In failing four times previously to do anything, it permitted Fuller's to kill our son. But that is the past and sadly, things cannot be undone. So today I am here to talk about what the village of Hensdale has done since Sean was killed. What has this board done to make that corner safe so that no other family has to endure the horrendous pain and loss that our family endures every day and will endure for the rest of our lives? And that so no other child, no other human, young or old, loses his or her life because they chose to walk 
in this beautiful village that we all love. We sought out this, this board has done nothing that will ensure safety. In fact, this board has done the opposite. It pushed through a quick approval of newly installed bollards without following its own procedures, without a proper assessment of their ability to prevent another tragedy. Now people walking on that sidewalk have the false sense that they are protected, but they are not. We sought out and engaged an expert in this field to assess the bollards installed by Fuller's. The expert's conclusion is that those bollards do not work. They would not stop a car going 20 miles per hour. Our son was killed with a car going 30 miles per hour. They don't work. Notwithstanding being informed of this fact, this board still approved the new bollards. The board also approved, but did not investigate, the effect that a collision with the bollards would have on a pedestrian when the bollard is struck and then it strikes a decorative brick wall that will be inches from it. There is no doubt that those bricks and other debris would be sent flying at high speeds directly at a pedestrian on the sidewalk or vehicles on the street. Safety on a sidewalk should be this board's number one priority. If the killing of an innocent boy walking on a sidewalk is not a wake-up call for permanent change on that corner, what is? There's a complete lack of understanding by this board of the severity and gravity of this tragedy and the trauma that this community has suffered. Again, this is the fifth time that this was recklessly driven out of Fuller's car wash across the sidewalk, across the street, causing damage to people, vehicles, and local businesses. I'm confident there have been more incidents that I'm not aware of, as well as countless near misses. And the new bollards would not adequately protect pedestrians. It has been nine months since Sean was killed, and nothing has been done to protect the public. Our objective is simple and the same one we expressed in December, public safety. We're not interested in things that look safe. We want to know with confidence that our friends, and neighbors and their children will be safe walking on a sidewalk on Lincoln Street, grabbing lunch at Fontano's, picking up their dry cleaning, walking to the farmer's market on Mondays, and walking to the public library as Sean was headed before he was senselessly killed in the fifth incident of this kind. Our council has recommended that we deliver a demand letter to the village manager, a copy of which can be found on the QR code on a flyer that we have here. The demand is for the revocation of the special use permit shutting down the car wash. Fullers would still own the property, but would need to operate a business that is consistent with the original zoning designation. When Sean called me that day, the day he was killed to tell me that he was done at the orthodontist, I told him we were going to the library before his job began at 4 p.m. So he should start walking and I would pick him up on the way. When I crossed the tracks heading north on Lincoln, I saw him out of the corner of my eye in front of the vet building. For a split second, I thought about honking, saying, jump in. But then I thought, no, that's not safe. It would be safer if he crossed at the crosswalk. I was not made aware of the fact that in front of Fuller's car wash, it was not safe. I will regret this decision for the rest of my life. I did not know about the other incidents. There was no warning sign, no alert to oncoming vehicles, no siren, no beeps when vehicles exited the car wash. We should have been warned. I am here today to warn the public that sidewalk and the street across that street are not safe. I am sure many of you are wondering why I feel the need to go to such great lengths to try to make Hinsdale safe after my child is already dead. And I will not benefit from any improved safety. First, I've always been taught and tried to instill in my children to do the right thing, even when it's hard and unpopular. Second, Sean loves superheroes and comics, and his self-made comic book superhero 
that he made in third grade was named the protector. It is really Sean's spirit that's giving me the strength and fortitude to be here today, to try to be the protector for his friends, his former classmates and teammates, his neighbors and res the other residents. His good friend was in the Fontana sub shop 20 minutes before Sean was killed. We cannot have another tragedy like that in this town. I know people believe this will never happen again, but unless this board revokes Fuller's special use permit, it is likely to happen again. With the increase in size and power of vehicles today, as well as the complexity of driving them and the epidemic of distracted driving, this will happen again. This village needs to prioritize safety. Just Google pedestrian deaths and you'll see that the size and height of vehicles today greatly increases the likelihood of pedestrian deaths. Then go to Fuller's Car Wash and watch how many large vehicles they service every day. Hinsdale residents take pride in our small and safe community, beautiful parks, good schools, local businesses, and the freedom with which we can let our children ride their bikes, scooters, and walk downtown. Our residents and our visitors deserve better. This is an opportunity to make the village safer, to do the right thing. We invite the village board to join our call for a safer Hinsdale. Sean's favorite superhero was Spider-Man, and he would often repeat the motto, with great power comes great responsibility. This board has the power. I'm asking you to do the responsible thing. Thank you. Oh, do you have any questions? So anybody else want to, well, let me just, we, we received your demand letter today, and it was sent by your law firm. And so we're gonna have our lawyers respond to that. And so I, I think that's the appropriate way to handle it. The one thing I will say on the Bollard issue, and, and first of all, let me just say that you have my deepest sympathy, I mean, and, and from the board too. I mean, we, we, are, we, are, we are all just, you know, we can't express our feelings about this. I mean, I think the whole community is behind you on this. I think that they all feel your pain. I, I can't imagine anything more heart rendering than to lose a child. I mean, I just can't imagine it. I just, I, I feel for you, you know, I, I, it never happened to me. I, I can't put myself in your shoes, but I can only imagine. And it's, it's horrible. And I appreciate that. I appreciate your pain and I appreciate what you're trying to do. And so you know, we're not enemies here. We are, we are on the same side. Um, but you, you sent a demand letter to the, to the village making certain claims and so I think I should let the lawyers respond to that but the one thing I I will say to you is with the Bollard issue because I did meet with you and you did and you did show me a, a video of the Bollards the we had looked at the Bollards before I met with you and I think they were four feet apart so then after I met with you and I took the video that you sent me and I gave it to the staff we have a village <coughs> um, engineer who we've worked with for, for many years who I trust uh, and he, we said, look at this. What do you think? And he looked at the video, and he, he told us, and I, I explained to the board, that the way the ballers were positioned, that they were four feet apart, and there was the, and that he, while each baller, well, it wouldn't stop a car at 35 miles an hour if it hit one baller straight on. So his suggestion is we put bollards in between the ballers that had been approved by the plan commission, so the ballers would, instead of being four feet apart, would be two feet apart, so any car coming directly out of Fuller's would hit two bollards. And he said, and he said, if you do that, it will withstand 30 miles, I think for the 30 miles an hour is what we used. So um, that's what we approved. And it was based upon an engineer's analysis. And, we, and I think I sent to you the work that he did and it's got math and geometry in it. And so I sent it to you. Then you sent me a, you hired an expert and you sent me that. I turned around and sent that to our expert, and I said, do you change your opinion? And he said, no. He said that this is safe. So it's not as though you know, we don't appreciate the fact that, that there, there has to be a structure outside of force to stop 
any cars from exiting, and we are, you know, 35 miles an hour is what we're using. But at this point, what we've approved is something that's been approved by our engineers. Now, if, 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 if somebody can convince me that our engineer is wrong, it's, just, it's an engine that we've used for a long time and we rely upon who's an expert in this area. So, you know, it, it isn't as though we've ignored this. I mean, we have hired engineers to look at this. I have a question. Sure. Are those bollards two feet apart right now? They will be when they put in. And they're not a, now. No, and, no, they're And you're not. allowing that car no. wash to operate well, with something that doesn't work? Well, they're supposed to be doing that now. They're supposed to be putting in the other ballers now. The way we left it with them is, is that the win they weren't going to do it for the winter, and I'm not, it was, I'm not sure if it was a weather or what, but we told them it has to be done by the spring, so it will be done shortly. But, but with, the, with the two ballers in between, they'll, be, they'll only be two feet apart and on the brick wall in front of it, and I've been assured that that would stop a car at 35 miles an hour. You didn't think that maybe it would be wise since it wasn't up to what your engineer said would stop a car going 30 miles an hour, that you should put something to warn pedestrians not to walk on that sidewalk until it is well, we, two we, feet we, apart? Yeah. So you've been letting people well, for I, these many months well, it's, I, risk I, their lives? Well, I don't know that they've risked their lives. They, they, it would have well, to be a car well, striking. Excuse me. Um, our child died. No, no, I'm talking about with the ballers that are there now. But they're going to put them in. They are, they are obligated to put them in. Okay. Yeah, if I could say one thing. My sure. name is Brian Richards for the benefit of the board. Um, the, the report that was done, I'm not an engineer either. Right. The report that was done according, and so the person that we hired runs the traffic safety lab, is a PhD in traffic safety, Texas A&M University, runs the traffic safety lab down there, Dr. Michael Bracken think some of his information's in the uh, package that you received today. He, he said that the report that he saw that we received from your engineer measured impact as if it were at a 15 degree angle, so more of a side impact, a car traveling almost parallel to the bollards that he at a 15 degree angle, not at a 90 degree angle. Now again, I'm not an expert, but if, if you or your engineer wants to lay down in front of those bollards and I'll drive a car 35 miles an hour, and we'll see what happens. Well, we certainly need to take another look at it. I can go back back to the engineer, but I, I have to rely upon our engineers for this. And, and I did send your report to them. We appreciate so, that. We yeah. appreciate it. it. It's still not safe. And they drive, by the way, they drive around the bollards. They drive on the sidewalk. Yeah. Brian knows we've sent videos. Right. And, and, and we've my sent understanding is they've been giving tickets for that too, right? Only when know. we stand Only there. When, and I was out there for 90 minutes sitting on the corner. I don't know if anybody here saw me the other day. Um, and then they, they stopped driving on the sidewalks, but right. you can see from the photographs for years and years, I mean, the, the ground is, right, right. dirty from, what, from all the traffic. It's not safe. The bollards aren't gonna make it safe, and like Chris said, even if it hits the, even at the, in this, please ask your engineer. When that bollard, even if those bollards work, which we believe they don't, even at two feet, if they get hit, do they move at all? Because if there's a brick wall, like Christine said, less than six inches from those bollards, and those bollards move a foot, they're going to hit that wall, and well, we, literally stuff will fly. I, I, will, I will have our engineer look at that again. I mean, so, but in so, the meantime, so they're operating. They're operating, be open and right. they have been right. operating. And, and you're right. telling me that that is not safe, and your engineers have confirmed that it's not safe, and you well, have done well, nothing no, to protect that sidewalk. No, what the engineers have confirmed is that putting additional bollards in will stop a car going 35 miles an hour. But they haven't they're, yet. Right. They're putting. The, they're going to put them in. They're so, they're obligated so to put them. in. I know, but why hasn't this board made sure that that sidewalk is safe in the meantime by shutting it down? We right. suggest it. Uh, we suggest you do that. I saw a woman with a stroller and a newborn walking by. I see kids going by all the time. Right. I've seen elderly people walk by. So you're telling me what, this is the point. Safety is not your number one priority. Right. And it needs to be. We will see that the bothers are put in as quickly but, as possible. Uh, yeah, I don't but think the bothers are I think are you need issue. to see that they work. Yeah. Yeah, I, it, two, two things. One. We don't want to be adversarial here. We want to work together. I, nor do I. Right? We, right. we, want to, we love this village. Right. Our friends are here. Right. Parents, we're building another house here. We're going to be here for a right. long time. Right. We're not going to let this issue go. Right? Safety right. is our new, it's our mission. Right. Right? And they're only operating with a special use permit. It is not zoned for a car wash. 
Well, see, that, a, that, that's the point of your letter. I mean, I, I, I think I know enough of the code, but I'm, I'm going to let the lawyers respond. I mean, the, the request so the trustees know is that we revoke the special use permit that was granted 30 years ago. Um, and, you know, we will respond to that. That's a, that's a technical issue of whether we can do that, but we will respond to your letter. But as it relates to public safety and the bollards, I'll take another look at that. One of the things you brought up, and I did bring it up with the engineer, is the bollards that, that your engineer proposed, I think, were flexible and so that they would bend. And his theory was that, that the kind of bollards that were folders were putting in would snap off if they were hit by a car. I asked the engineer about that, and he said that that would not happen if because there, there's rebar in the bars. So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to go back and look at it again. I mean, I don't want the community to think that, that's, that we, did, we did not do our due diligence in approving this because I did send it to an engineer twice and sent your, your proposal to an engineer too. But I'll do it a third time and we'll make sure that, that it is something that will stop a car going 35 miles an hour. Can and we will make sure that Fuller's does that work immediately. Can we send it to another engineer? Well, I mean, because what engineer is going to say no? I gave you the wrong advice. Well, I mean, I mean, it's his professional reputation. I mean, I, you know, we went back, and you know, he's had every opportunity to change his mind. I mean, if, if it would make people happy, we can get another engineer to look at it. If you'd like that, I'm happy to do that. If that would make people feel more confident that their ballers will work, I can what, do that. What about a traffic study? Well, I'm not sure this traffic study would would do. <clears throat> well, they have um, many curb cuts there. There might be a suggestion that they don't have so many curb cuts. There might be a suggestion that the wall extend. I'm not sure how far it goes, but all the way along that sidewalk so that they're not, because on Saturday they were going into the sidewalk to get around a Jeep in order to bring it over there. Okay. So. Well, we can certainly look at that then. We've okay. suggested shutting down the sidewalk some, something to, or a sign, we'll pay for a sign. This sidewalk is not safe. Child was killed there, right? Well, I cry every time I see a, um, a watch out for deer or duck crossing because how hard would that have been? Again, this was the fifth time. Yeah. Fifth time. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you for Thank coming. You. I appreciate it. Anybody else, public comments on this or any other topics? My, <clears throat> my name's Tom Rogowski. I'm friends with the Richards. Uh, my son was a good friend of Sean. Is there any reason why Fuller's is operational right now, knowing that those, can't, does this board have the authority? You don't have the authority. To shut them down? No. Temporarily. No. Until the bollards. Well, we, we will respond. If you know they're operating. Right, I know they're And un unsafe, I, I'm not a lawyer. I mean, it just seems kind of silly that, that I just heard from you that it's not safe. No, I, didn't, I did not say it's not safe. I said that we're going to make sure that a car coming out at 35 miles an hour will be stopped by the bollards. So, so okay, so let's talk through that. So right now, a car operating 30, 35 miles an hour may go through those bollards. If it hit him it, 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 it straight on, it may, not, it may not be stopped by the bollards. It may go. So, un hence, unsafe. No, I don't, I don't agree with that. I mean, if we, were, we're, we were trying to do it with 100% efficiency. I mean, it would, it would stop a car now, but we're going to make sure it's over-engineered so it stops a car going 35 miles an hour at any angle. So... You know, we we are we will do what we can to make sure it's absolutely safe. But I don't we are think not, we I, cannot I, shut down fours. And mm -hmm. and we will we, we we had a demand letter from the Richards asking that we shut down fours. Our lawyers respond to that. We'll make the letter public, but it will go through the what what the requirements are for shutting down a business. Bought and paid for. I'm Julie Laux. Why, why hasn't the sidewalk been closed? Why hasn't the sidewalk been closed? Seems like a very obvious safety issue to just close the sidewalk so that people know that 
It's still being figured out. You're going to change it. Why don't you close it? We can consider that. Seems rather obvious. Yeah. I would say the same thing to you with your trucks on 8th Street, going to Oak Street. I have um, documented that with the village. They're blocking 8th Street, getting to Oak School. It's a major mess. My kids walk to school. Yes. Your foreman Dave was contacted. Goes both ways. My kids are on the sidewalks walking to Oak School. 7th Street. If, if it's a I, huge if thoroughfare. Might, if I might, I don't think anybody's died from that. I don't think it's an inconvenience. It's just it maybe a safety hazard. And I'm, Look, I'm, I'm happy, on your side. And I'm happy but that it you're goes concerned about safety. It goes both ways. You're, you're on the board. You can't have you're your trucks blocking board. sidewalks. Okay. Guys, but nobody's guys we are on your side. But nobody's died. This is not adversarial. You're not. on your just, side. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a great suggestion that we close sidewalks and construction sites as well. That's what we should. And how are the kids going to get to school? Any, anyone else? No. I'm Maria Banks, and the Richards are dear friends. My sons are like brothers with Finn and Sean. Um, you mentioned that you'll make sure that these ballers are implemented immediately. What does that mean? What is that time frame? Because we're, now, we're, yes. nine months later, with them operating in that way, I haven't been able to drive down that street. And Christine has been braver to, to go there and see Sean's picture in Fontano's, put back the cross that was put there by someone. I have not been able to do that myself. And when you say you understand the pain, I feel the pain, but I know that my pain is just a tiny ounce of what the Richards feel. And reliving some of these obvious things for safety and how they impact those of us that hold them dear to our heart, what we feel and how we're impacted by seemingly some of these simple things shut down the sidewalk, make sure they put the bollards in, have a set time frame, put a sign out there, some of these simple things hearing nine months later that you are gonna take a look at it and you're gonna evaluate and you'll look into it. Why, isn't the, why aren't those simple actions taken more urgently? Because I will tell you, many of us in this room are impacted by that and feel Sean's loss and mourn with our friends. But again, what we feel is a tiny fraction and reminders as we drive around town, seeing deer crossing signs, watch out for, I mean, we stop for our birds crossing the road, like just simple things. They have to be addressed more quickly because they're never gonna lose their pain. That's never gonna go away. But we can try to ease the pain by making it safer and doing what they ask of the village. And to me, that's a no-brainer. So that this doesn't happen to one of our kids, to one of your grandkids, to your niece or nephew. Because the pain is indescribable. It's indescribable for me I still cry. I can only imagine Christine and Brian and how this has impacted the rest of their family. And so I hear your, I heard your words at the beginning of this meeting and you can say you empathize, but what shows that you empathize is quick action and resolution. Yes. Uh, Sarah Barclay, 433 East 3rd. This is my second time in front of all of you. I was here months ago and asked for a traffic study. And um, you informed me that bollards were going up in the spring. 
we have had warm weather, weather, ample time. And I had the same question, well, what is going to happen in the meantime? And they still operate. And there are still no bollards. And it's been Well, they're bollards now. They're just not. No, still no bollards in, that are effective. In between effective. the bollards. Right. Correct. That are effective. Yeah. And I asked specifically what happens in the meantime. And you just said, just wait. They'll go up in yeah. the spring. Right. Well, and here we are. So there are so. bollards now at every four feet. Effective. Right. Once. So, because so you said that there were ones going two feet. And right. I asked when. And we said spring. spring. And I said, well, what happens in the meantime? And there was just. No response. So, so th this is the spring. They're going to put the bollards in. So yes, we'll but, have that done immediately. But in the, in the meantime, it's been ample. The weather has been perfectly appropriate to put those in in the meantime. Thank you. Anyone else? Marge? I'm sorry. Hi, my name is Michelle Papillon. Uh, I'm a resident as well, 930 South Garfield, and a dear friends with the Richards as well. My son graduated eighth grade with Sean, and um, I just want to say we all are, I, you know, I'm sure I know we all want the same thing here. It's not unreasonable what the Richards are asking for. You have a whole community who's grieving, and Honestly, I, I'm shocked that the village, we've been here 12 years, that the village hasn't done more, hasn't done anything, actually. You know, this, what a tragedy. I mean, this, this boy was walking down the street. Please, please, we ask, do your jobs, and please listen to this family. Thank you. Anything else? Marge, did you have something you want to say? Good evening. My name is Margaret Wolf Ahrens. I'm chair of the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners and over 30 year resident here in the village. I'm not here to speak on the issue that so many people have very eloquently addressed. Um, uh, and I share a lot of those sentiments about the loss. And as a former member of the Board of Trustees, I trust that the board will do all that it can to make things right. Um, but I'm here to speak on a different item tonight. I'm here to speak to you uh, briefly on an item listed on your consent agenda. It's namely to, as it's called, approve an ordinance amending Title Eight of the Village Code of Hinsdale relating to the Deputy Fire Chief and the Shift Commanders. Just a little background here. Um, I would like to say I have really considered it a privilege to work with our public safety professionals since I was a trustee on this board and I chaired the Zoning and Public Safety Committee of this board um, at a time when we had meetings of the Zoning and Public Safety Committee to do really in-depth work on these issues um, that come before your board. And after the expiration of my board service, um, I became a member of the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners at the request of the then president. And I have now been the chair for many years. Many of you here have heard me say, and I wrote this down before any of these people spoke, um, but you heard them say it, and I hope that you all agree, that the most important service that our village can provide to its residents and others are those services provided by our fire and police departments. That is why I've continued to serve in this volunteer capacity since shortly after the events of 9-11. I've had the pleasure to interview and see promoted the members of the fire department, and I hope you share the pride that we feel as commissioners in the incredible service these public safety professionals provide to our community, which rightly expects such excellent service. I will just tell you anecdotally, just this past Sunday morning, um, I was out for an early walk on my block and I saw that our firefighter paramedics had been responding to an emergency at the church down the street from us. And as I came up to the scene, many parishioners who were coming out of church expressed their gratitude and spoke of the professionalism they witnessed, um, which is something we hear all the time as commissioners, and I trust that you as trustees hear it often. 
We attribute a lot of that to the very thorough process we use for uh, evaluating candidates and for bringing them in, retaining them, and promoting them. So I just wanted to give you some thoughts and information now specifically on this consent agenda item. Um, my understanding is it did not get considered by the committee. Um, I learned about it um, only when it was already considered on March 19th. So um, one of the things that I noticed in comparing that item from 319 to today's item is that they're not precisely the same. So I'm not sure whether it's properly even on the consent agenda or should be removed from the consent agenda uh, this evening. But let me just say that the proposed ordinance, as I read it, would eliminate the position of deputy chief, a position most recently held by John Carlson, who has served, as we see from our vantage point at the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners, and as a 30-year resident, who's known most of these people over the years, uh, that he has served with great ability, dedication, and distinction. I understand from watching the recording of the 319 meeting that another community member expressed some concerns about eliminating a sworn position on the fire department. I agree, particularly since the deputy chief steps in when the chief is not available and other village departments, including our police department, have such an appointment. In the case of public safety officials, the chiefs and the deputies do in fact respond to calls as needed. I'm sure you know this. And frankly, I'm glad that they can and that they do so. So with one less responder when we eliminate this position and the recent retirement of Chief Gianelli and soon expected departures of other very experienced members of the fire department, we will potentially be short staffed. You may or may not know that the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners is currently in very preliminary stages of an entry level hiring process, but our applications are few and those who tested and passed are fewer. And so we cannot expect that we're going to be able to get a lot of new recruits here to join the fire department uh, soon. And of course, we can never expect that they're gonna perform at the levels that we have with these very experienced people who are gonna be leaving us and have left us. Now, as for the changes to the duty of the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners, I did check the operative statute, the state statute, and I have raised questions previously um, with the manager about whether this proposed change is even allowed by law, as I noted to her. And I've noticed that the ordinance frequently uses the language, if permitted by law or something like that. Um, I'm looking for your exact language. Let's see, to the extent allowed by law. Um, so that is a question I've had that has not been answered with respect to that act. Incidentally, the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners for the benefit of the trustees who are here was not informed of the proposed change before it was presented on March 19th. Um, the result of this change to what we do as a board is that it looks like the village manager would be the person to approve captains if um, this change goes through who have been previously part of our board of fire and police commissioners promotional processes for many years. Uh, we've been complimented over the years by people on this board, residents, others, um, applicants, that our process, which is extremely thorough, has resulted in many fine public servants here in the village, including our people in the fire department and its leaders. So in closing, I'd just like to say that um, I would like to know that this has actually thoroughly been considered uh, for its ramifications with respect to public safety and especially looking forward as well for our ability to recruit, retain, and have the ability to promote the very finest people in our fire department. We've heard everyone talking about how public safety is so important. I would not still be doing this volunteer work, as many as hours as I devote to it uh, on a yearly basis over these many years, 
if I didn't think it was really important. And um, I did, you know, hope that I would have more opportunity to discuss this potentially with the village manager, but I haven't been able to reach her in the last several days. And so I thought I should come to the board meeting to make sure that you at least knew of my concerns and that my viewpoints and those of our other commissioners were shared with you. Thank you. Thank you. So I, you know, it, just to respond to a couple of things you said, el eliminating the deputy chief position is legal and we've checked that with the lawyers. Um, as to your point about not having a a deputy chief is somebody who can respond to calls. Mm -hmm. My recollection is for before John Carlson that Tim McElroy held the position mm -hmm. of deputy chief for 10 years. Mm -hmm. He was not a sworn officer. He could not respond to mm -hmm. calls. So for 10 years, that position had somebody in there that could not respond to calls. So that is, that's the reason that's not a concern for me because for 10 years, that position did not have somebody who could respond. Mm -hmm. Um, and then as to the, uh, you know, the, the issue about staffing of the fire department, I really do think that's a board decision as to whether we have positions or eliminate positions. And, and we think that for a variety of reasons, we can eliminate the position of, of deputy chief. It's consistent with the law and it's consistent with maintaining uh, a, a vibrant and healthy and functional uh, fire department. And it also has the added benefit that it saves co money. So that's the, that's the rationale. And I'm not saying you don't have the authority to eliminate that or it's not legal. That was not my point. My point is I think it's ill-advised. Okay. I do understand that Tim McElroy functioned in a role that was not a sworn role. Yeah. But for the last many years, we have had a deputy chief. And in the past, the village has had a deputy chief. Right. And what I know about the call volume is that it is tremendous. And we have way better results here than other communities do if you talk to other people. One of the reasons I was very interested in serving um, on this board in the Zoning and Public Safety um, Committee was I had the interesting and very frightening experience of being with a family member in a neighboring community who had a medical emergency. And the nature of the fire response there compared to Hinsdale was dramatic. I'm glad he survived. Yeah. So I've always been very passionate about these issues. I agree that you do get to make staffing changes. Right. I'm just saying from my perspective, in my role, and based on my experience and my long uh, residency, I think it is a concern. Yeah. I understand people want to save money, but I want to say that I also was in your seat, and I was in the seat of the ACA committee, was on that committee too, and I just think that it's about priorities. We heard that earlier from the Richards and from all these other residents. My own view, and you might agree or you might not, and we can agree to disagree, I'm fine with that, Tom, is that public safety should be our biggest priority. No, and we I, should I, I, allocate the dollars to promote it, protect it, and meet the expectations of the community. Yes. And because I, and I think I, they're very high, as we heard tonight. Right, and I, I agree, and I and I am very proud of our fire department. I think the response time is excellent, mm -hmm. and we would not do anything to jeopardize that, but I think we, have a, we do have a, an a ability to balance between maintaining public safety and making sure that we have a, a budget that it enables us to sustain mm -hmm. the fire department, the police department, other departments. So, that's kind of the prerogative of the village, but I, I do not for one moment believe that eliminating the uh, deputy chief would have any adverse effect on public safety, not for a moment. And we will make sure that that does not happen. If I ever got a sense that that happened, we would revisit the decision, but we are not doing this with any thought that this would have any negative impact on public safety. Because I agree with you that that's very important, and we are, we are trying to do that. We have to manage a budget, we have to manage a, a crippling pension costs, mm -hmm. and we are trying to do that while we're maintaining the public safety that we have. Mm -hmm. I hear that. Um, but just as a point of information, who will step in for the chief without a deputy chief? Have well, you figured that out? We're, we're, we're working on it. So there's not an answer to that question yet? Well, we, 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 I have to, we have, the trustees and I will talk about what the plan forward will be. Because just, that's really important. Right. That's really important. And I hope that you're right, Tom, that we don't have a problem as a result of the 
deputy chief elimination with response to calls or potentially with keeping people here because of a loss of a promotional opportunity. But it's all speculative, right? right? I guess if I were voting, first of all, I would do it on consent. But secondly, I would think about that. Okay. And exercise my vote accordingly. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your input. Anyone else? Appreciate it. You on the agenda or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, we we can. Uh, we'll be there quick. Yeah, and I I don't think you're going to have any complaints about our sure. decision. So. Oh. Oh, anybody anybody else want to speak on anything? No. No, I'm I'm good. I don't need to say anything. Okay. Okay. All right. So I think I think it's to you, Matt. Okay. Uh, this is item 7A, it's a first read uh, to approve the pay plans for the village employees. The village has four plans. There's one for full-time and salaried employees. There's one for part-time employees. There's one for public services, hourly employees. And then we have the uh, police officers who are uh, covered by a collective bargaining agreement. Um, generally speaking, the plans are going to have a a uh, 3% increase. This is consistent with what the uh, sworn police officers are getting under the collective bargaining agreement. There's a few adjustments based on uh, a survey of, of market comps, and you'll see um, what the changes are if you look in your packet the, um, in, in, uh, in the red, red lining and deletion. You'll see what the, uh, what the differences are, but I'll just go over a couple of the, of the changes. Um, we're moving the deputy police chief chief to a higher uh, pay range, uh, that's M125. Um, for some of the part-time pay grades, um, we're removing the top steps. This is uh, NM3, 6, and 8. And then um, uh, some of the uh, introductory uh, pay rates uh, are being frozen, again, based on um, a survey of market comps. This would be NM3, and uh, the proposal in that um, pay grade is to have two tiers, uh, one for existing employees and one for uh, future employees. Um, the pay plans will be effective starting on May 1 and would run through April 30 of uh, next year. And um, all of the pay increases are uh, reflected in our, our 2024 budget for this year. Uh, Tracy, anything else you want to add? Any questions? Um, can we put this on the consent agenda? I think so. <clears throat> Neil. Okay, item 7B uh, is a motion to approve a resolution to adopt the 2023 DuPage County Natural Hazards Mitigation Plan. Uh, adopting this plan gives the village access to pre and post disaster funding from, the, from FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Uh, the plan identifies activities that could be undertaken to reduce health risks, safety hazards, property damage, caused by natural disasters. Uh, we last adopted this plan in 2018 and it is updated every five years, which is why we're doing this again. The key thing is we need, in order to have access to funding from FEMA, we just, we have to adopt this, uh, adopt this plan or to approve a resolution to adopt it. Questions? No. Okay. Consent agenda? Yeah. Thanks. That moves us to item 7C, is to award the construction contract for the 2024 sidewalk program to Strata Construction uh, in the amount of $138,000. Uh, the amount is within budget, and the vendor also did the sidewalk program in 2023. No issues Questions in 23? No issues, yeah. No issues? Yeah. No. Okay, consent agenda. Yeah. Good. And then, uh, oh, you got three? One more. One more. Yeah, one more, yeah. Uh, moving on to item 7D, um, the last meeting we awarded the contract for this year's street resurfacing. Excuse me. How did that happen? Uh, you got some kind of rock and roll band on your. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had your kids <laughs> I'm trying to keep current. Okay? <laughs> okay, sorry. Moving on to item 7D, last meeting we awarded the contract for this year's street resurfacing and our engineering department is already looking ahead to 2025 and is proposing to award the contract for design engineering and construction observation. 
for the 2025 resurfacing program to, uh, program to Hancock Engineering in the amount of $266,000. We have a representative from Hancock, and uh, we finally got to you. Thank you for your patience. Uh, the, R the RBA contains a list of streets. Uh, they're going to be resurfaced. Uh, Hancock Engineering has not previously worked for the village, but the firm has completed numerous roadway and water main projects in Cook and DuPage counties. And finally, the amount for the design and observation work is within the available project budget. Any questions on that? Uh, that thank, you for, uh, thank you for thank coming. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Luke. Yep, which uh, moves us to agenda item 7E, and this is for outdoor dining. Uh, we typically, and it's for the uh, a temporary use permit. We're doing this because the, it's on private property. Um, that requires a temporary use permit. This is uh, outdoor dining basically at Fuller House at 50 South Garfield, um, and it's from October 31st. Also, uh, permission to allow music from Wednesday, May 22nd through September 26th on Wednesday evenings only. I would note, probably most importantly here, that this was the exact same application that has been approved for the past two years in a row. And according to Chief King, we've had no complaints on the outdoor dining or the music. Okay. Any questions? I would advise you put that on consent agenda. Yep. yep. Which moves us to agenda item 7F, which is very similar. Uh, this is for uh, Giuliano's Pizza at uh, 40 Village Place. And they're looking for an outdoor uh, temporary use permit for from May 22nd until August 15th of this year. Uh, it is gonna occupy two of the four parking spots in front of its uh, restaurant. And it's very similar to, um, to Fuller House. We've approved this the past two years in a row. The seating, is, the seating configuration the first year was slightly different, but the application this year, the seating configuration is exactly the same. Yeah. And as noted again, there were no complaints last year on this front, uh, according to the chief. Consent? Questions, yep, consent. One of the things I suggested to staff is that we pass an ordinance that if, if, if a restaurant wants to do the exact same thing in succeeding years, we don't have to bring it back to the board. It would just be approved. Does that make sense? Approved administratively? Approved yes. administratively, yeah. yeah. If it's just the same thing. If I they would, change it, it come back to us. Yeah, I would say unless there was any type of public complaints. Yes, or issues with right, it. right, right. Yep. Yeah. But yeah. without that, I would agree yeah. with that. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, which moves us to agenda item 7G, and this is to approve an ordinance for various additional properties within the historic overlay zoning district uh, for inclusion into the historically significant structures property list. Um, as this board knows, uh, we passed a, uh, a historic overlay district and we've gone through, I believe, three rounds. This is the next rounds, and these, the number of homes that are going on are getting smaller and smaller as the population that they have to look at you know, shrinks. Um, this package that we have is fairly, fairly detailed. Uh, I would note that the HPC uh, Historic Preservation Commission did hold a meeting on March 6th, reviewed all of these seven properties, and recommended unanimously that they be put onto the overlay district. Uh, just to, and I'm not going to go into detail on each of them, but I'm going to note six of the seven properties at four, 546 North, North County Line Road, 4 East 5th Street, 122 North Park, uh, 42 South Quincy, 200 Ravine, and 615 South Washington Street. Um, you know, it's, it's very interesting to look through the details in here as far as all the information that goes back. You learn a lot about, just learn a lot about the village. You know, one of the properties is in the process of being sold right now at 565 North Washington Street, and there were questions from the attorneys. So the rather than going through and answering all those, the seller or the seller of that property just asked for it to be removed. And as we talked about when we approved this, it's at the property owner's discretion. So that has been removed. So we're looking at the six properties. Um, also with. Um, this is, we have this on as a first read, but we made a change saying that if there were no material issues that we had to come back with, that we would vote on this. So um, if there's any questions here this evening, I would, I would, I, I plan to make a, a motion to approve this and then vote on it. Okay. Do we have any questions? It wouldn't go on the consent agenda? No, Next time? We, we got rid of that. Is that right? 
Bethany, what did we, Matthew? That's what the material says. So yeah, Bethany, do we go on the, does it just go on the consent agenda next time? We've typically been putting them on the consent agenda. We can we can do them in we one reading for the next round. Yeah, we'll put it on the consent. That that way it gets two two yeah. looks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. And Matt. for the next round, if you'd like, we can just have it be one reading. No, let's leave it the way that okay. it is now. That was my mistake. Thank you. Okay, so consent agenda yep. for this next. Yeah, yep. I, I just had one note. The the yep. ordinance still refers to seven properties, so we just need to tweak that. Oh, good call. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I thought we had gotten all of them to make it. Uh, the one in the package six. says seven. The ordinance. Maybe the wrong ordinance was attached. That could be too. Yeah, because I know we did have one where it did get updated. So I'll make sure the, the correct ordinance is in here. Next item up is accounts payable. Uh, I had the bag uh, this meeting, um, found everything to be in order. So I will move to approve payment of the accounts payable for the period of March 28, 2024. Through April 10, 2024, in the aggregate amount of one million eighty-eight thousand four hundred and sixty-six dollars and sixty-six cents, as set forth on the list provided by the village treasurer, of which a permanent copy is on file with the village clerk. Second. Roll call vote. Trustee yes. Pashima. Aye. Trustee Braden. Aye. Trustee Siffler. Aye. Trustee Fisher. Aye. Trustee Burns. Aye. Trustee Banky. Aye. And then, Tom, just in a matter of transparency, can we take 8B off the consent agenda and vote for it individually, given the comments sure, of, sure. of Margaret? I just sure, want to sure. make sure that all sure, the sure. trustees' voices I'll are heard on that. Okay. So I'll take up agenda item 8B, and I'm simply going to make a motion to approve an ordinance amending Title Eight of the Village Code of Hinsdale relating to the Deputy Fire Chief and Shift Commanders, and then just open it up to see if there's comments from any of the, any of the trustees. Hearing none, can I get a second? Second. second. Roll call vote. Trustee Pashima? Aye. Trustee Braden? Aye. Trustee Stifler? Aye. Trustee Fisher? Aye. Trustee Burns? Aye. Trustee Banky? Aye. So that leaves us one, with one item on the consent agenda, 8C. Can we just have a motion with respect to that? Move to, uh, move to approve consent agenda item 8C. Second. Roll call vote. Trustee Pashima? Aye. Trustee Braden? Aye. Trustee Stifler? Aye. Trustee Fisher? Aye. Trustee Burns? Aye. Trustee Bank? Aye. Okay, that takes us to tollway. Anything on the tollway? There'll be some notifications going out to that area. They're going to proceed with some work. Uh, they're going to be starting some work on the noise walls. As soon as we, the mean, the village receives that information, we'll update the website, and we're hopeful to have the tollway representatives here at a future meeting to okay. just give an update. Okay. Um, and by the way, I did. Had, I've gotten m memos about the meetings with residents in the tollway. Has has that been shared with all the trustees in case they're interested? We may want to do that just just so they know. Yeah, they've been in the. Uh, oh, they, they, they've notes. been on. The, okay, they've all seen yeah, the weekly okay, packet notes. Okay, okay. There's been some. Oh, you know. You okay, them. okay. Um, 150. Do we have anything? Yes, okay. uh, the end of this month, we are gonna be meeting with our design team and we're hoping to be back to the board in May with our final uh, configurations and thoughts with a beautiful, robust and maintenance friendly design. And we'll make sure that we're in line with the thoughts from the HBC, from the board and our design team. So please stay tuned. Okay. How much did we end up getting in funding? We have approximately $71,000 from residents and businesses to date. Excellent. Yeah. Citizens' petitions, anyone else? Trustee comments? We have a reason for a closed session tonight. I don't know if we have that little script for anybody to read. Oh, you got it. Yep. Okay, great. So I'm going to uh, move to adjourn the meeting into closed session under Section 5 of the ILCS 120 backslash 2C1. Appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of a specific employee or legal counsel not to reconvene into open session. Second. Roll call vote. Trustee Pashman? Aye. Trustee Braden? Aye. Trustee Stifler? Aye. Trustee Fisher? Aye. Trustee Burns? Aye. Trustee Vanky? Aye. Thank you.